Hello, and welcome to number five of Up Your Jumper. In this episode, I'll take you to the banks of the Swan River in North Fremantle to visit the Apace Natives Nursery. I spoke with Arian there, who gave me a bit of history about where Apace has come from and what they're up to now. My name is Arian. I've been here for far too long. Uh, the organisation's been in operation for 20, 25 years. Yeah. And we were sort of one of the early organisations that are interested in sustainability, interested in uh, environment, interested in resource conserving and that, those sort of things. We've got the name APACE, but it's had quite a few names of what it stands for. It's not a strict acronym, but it's uh, one of them is um, Appropriate Technology in Community and Environment. And so it started off very much as an appropriate technology development group. The organisation was very successful at getting funding. And uh, during, during those years, the year, early 80s, the, the sort of programs that we did is we introduced an uh, energy efficiency program. We partnered up with, uh, with the State Housing Commission, so the, the local public housing authority, and we went through and insulated about 750 houses through the uh, Fremantle region. What they're all talking about doing now. That's right. The, one of the other focus that was all, we've always had is a look at transfer of skills and also look at the disadvantage within our community. So that, that program, for example, involved a lot of training of minors. It also uh, included gender equality. So it's pretty much seen as a male bastion trades sort of thing and so that those sort of uh, things were also breaking down. It was also seen as an introduction to workplace in Australia for a lot of uh, migrants and those, those days uh, there was a lot of Polish, there was also a lot of South Americans. So we've always had a focus on it directing it towards a disadvantage within the community one way or another. And so we've moved through a whole series of things in that time. Also, we also moved into the renewables, and so we started uh, programs there in, uh, with high schools. One of the other uh, projects was some little, little wind generators, turbines that came out. So we set out a better program on the side here where we set up a hybrid system. We're still grid connected. And that was the important thing about it. It wasn't a standalone system, it was a grid connected system. And it had uh, several ramifications out of that. As we tried to connect to the grid, it was uh, Western Power sort of went into a bit of a spin. And so they sent us stuff almost like we were going to build into the other power station or something with it, you know, for the engineering specs. So that was great because it actually forced them to start to see how they could deal with it. But as an organisation, what we found is that we were very good at getting funding, and that's we never received any government funding as such. It was only for projects and that sort of thing. When I first started here, I was uh, uh, had 20 people to look after, and then all those pro <laughs> projects dried up. You put your submissions in, and they might be three, six, or nine month pipelines, yeah. and uh, you get two, three knockbacks. It was quite detrimental on the organisation. The committee decided what we needed was an enterprise. And there's a couple of us who had expertise in growing native plants. And what we decided was that what wasn't being done here was there was no emphasis on using local flora. All the scientific work had been done on the different soils and what grew in them and all that sort of thing. So we sat down and said, OK, these are all the things that can be used for revegetation. And we started slicing out a whole pile of things. Uh, and so then we developed the catalogue and then we started promoting that idea. It was really quite a quaint idea when we first started because it, to everybody's uh, mindset was that, well, if it's a native, it's got to be good. And we're saying, it's not that it's bad, but it actually doesn't belong here. Because you need the, the right native for the right area. That's right, yeah. yeah. And we started promoting the idea of bush regeneration, so we set up the first bush regeneration courses here. And then a whole series of sort of allied uh, fields uh, started opening up. Yeah. So we have a landscape architectural service. We have an uh, environmental construction service that we do a lot of events along the coast here. Yeah. A lot of the ramps and those being built by us. Park area. And oh, that, that's sort of boardwalks down there. Boardwalks and those sort of things. We project manage a lot of revegetation for local councils and mines and uh, those sort of things. So, and that, in a sense, to where, where we've come. Up to speed. Yeah. But, you know, the, the way we look at you, trying to use things of what we do, so the nursery. It's got environmental outcomes in terms of its promotional tool to teach people about their local plants, but it also has other other things that we can do in terms of its community use. And so, we've always supported the use of TAFE horticultural students, university students involved in uh, in it. We do a lot of work with people with uh, disabilities, one way or another. We're growing 500,000 plants at the moment. Somebody has to put 500,000 pots in, into trays and. and 
when you've got kids with disabilities of very varying degrees, you know, putting 20 pots into a tray and you can't take 19, it has to be 20, can be a lot of work. And so we've been able to involve a lot of groups which, which otherwise wouldn't actually get access to a, a work site and a, and a place and be able to walk away at the end of it and know that they've done actually something productive for a non-profit organisation and also also for the environment. Yeah. And then of course we have people who are just really passionate and love plants and they can come down and volunteer. So in a sense the place has become a venue and that's how I like to describe it. It's a, it's a venue for the community. Yeah, so whatever. it sort of brings people from all yeah, walks of life together. That's right, and all, all mixing, mixing yeah. together. That's been one of the pluses of it. <laughs> Having said that, would <laughs> you like to come and have a look around? Yeah, yeah, well, let's see. This one down here is a cerebral palsy association. We've been coming for about 15 years. They do all of our pot washing, so we recycle all of our plastic. Yeah. This is what we call sanitizer. So all of our dirty pots come in. Uh, here we've got a big fiberglass bar, a gas heat exchanger. But these big chip baskets, you know, metre by metre by metre sort of thing, that all the pots are stacked into. It's all a little hand crane. They drop them in there, they leave them in there for an hour. It heats to about 65C. So they, they soak back in that, come out, and then they come up into the nursery. Now, plastic is a big part of trade. There are some sustainable products, but this sort of plastic of the quality that we're using, we can get 10 or 15 years out of some of these pots and, and out of the trays. So you're more thinking about the overall lifespan of Here we have a policy of being able to use pesticides, fungicides, and herbicides and through the nursery but we, in fact, use very, very, very little at all. Yeah. Uh, when we're, we're, this is an accredited nursery under an Australian accreditation scheme. When they first came to have a look at our chemical shed, they couldn't believe their eyes. Because it was empty? Because <laughs> it was virtually empty. <laughs> we had some things that were still left over from our uh, organic uh, veggie garden days. What we do is we allow ourselves to use uh, those chemicals when we need to, but it's only on a need, needs to basis, and we'll look for less toxic or least toxic methods to yeah. start off with. Uh, we're working, walking through the nursery at the moment. Of course, you have to have a radio on in the nursery. It's a standard operating procedure. OK, we have a series of shade houses. The whole place has all been slowly put together. I talked before about how we did a lot of training with our youth. Yep. In those days, uh, take, they, uh, uh, we're looking at outsourcing. So we put them through uh, a training program. They learn how to weld a real thing that's not going to get pulled apart afterwards and trying to always link as many many things together as possible so like when they're doing their training they're actually adding to the yeah adding to the infrastructure, the infrastructure. And so, so it was all built slowly we've grown 500,000 plants we spread over a large area and that's off one household main <laughs> including <laughs> keeping the office going on the same thing so we are very careful about how we use water yeah this is a i just describe it for you it's a small shed with a whole series of benches in it to put trays and this is our smokehouse now this is where the nursery started from so this has almost been longer here longer than anybody else so smoking really does increase germination of our native plants is that to replicate fires it replicates thing, the fire but it's not so much the heat, it's the smoke. If you see a big forest fire going through, you'll, you'll see it approaching, and then suddenly, let's say, a eucalypt tree will just burst into flames. The flames haven't got to it yet, just the heat's there enough, and off it goes, and the whole crown just goes, and it's like, fuck. <laughs> That's what it's like, you know? And what it is, is that, particularly with the eucalypts and all the metasia, there's a lot of volatile oils in those leaves. Now, that makes them very inflammable. But it also means that they have a lower flush point. So in effect, in a way, it's a cooler fire. It's a huge amount of heat given off. Yeah. If you were standing over the top of it, you know, it would be phenomenal yeah. when a tree like that goes up. Okay? Yeah. But the stuff underneath doesn't. And so what you tend to only get is you only tend to get a charring of the wood. When you get the charring of the wood is when you get the smoking happening. It means that smoke, uh, it's heavy, and it's settling, it's settling down after the fire has gone through and, and onto the soil and then it's moving through the, through the soil and it's coming into contact with the seeds and it's, Imagine, that's where the magic yeah, part yeah. happens. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine nobody's particularly quite sure about what goes on at that point. Though we've got a few ideas about it. A lot of what nursery is about is trying to emulate the environment. Yeah. So we, we give them a hot water treatment which isn't actually a natural thing that happens and, and smoking as well. 
That was Arian from A Pace Natives Nursery. More info can be found on their website or by heading down to saying g'day at 1 Johanna Street, North Fremantle, WA. That's a lot for this one. Catch you next time.